Northern governors reject the disbandment of Special Anti-Robberies Court, popularly known as SARS. And a ban is placed on protest in the nation's capital, Abuja. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeni. Welcome to Plus Politics. In what seems like a twist of events, the Northern Governors have expressed support for the Special anti robberies Court, SARS, saying that the unit has been useful in the fight against insecurity in the region. The Chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, NGF, and uh, the Plateau State Governor, Simon Lalong, stated this. He noted that what was needed was the reformation of the unit to enable it carry out its function optimally. Joining us to throw more light on this is uh, Public Affairs Analyst, Mr. Gbola Oba. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, good to have you. And joining us all the way from Kaduna is um, the Khan Chairman as the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna Branch, uh, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, let me start with you, uh, Reverend. Looking at uh, what the Northern Governors have said, uh, you can be able to give, you should be able to give us a first-hand experience. What exactly is your position on this? Well, uh, I actually read the statement credited to Governor Lalong, the chairman of Northern Governors Forum. But my understanding is that he is simply saying that not everything about SARS is bad. So SARS is bad, he admits, but not everything about SARS is bad. What we need to learn and know the difference between what Governor Lalong is saying and what the general public are saying is, you should know that many of our leaders are not in touch with the pain, with the suffering, with the dis disappointment, with the treatment their followers or the people they are leading are passing through. So Governor Lalong, as a governor, will naturally have to say what he said. What he's simply saying is that, look, for us in government, we are happy with SARS. But we as masses, we as citizens, are larger than those we have placed in government. And our government is supposed to think about us, about the pains we experience and the disappointment, the treatment that SARS is giving to us. SARS may have done one good thing for governors, but SARS has done one million things bad for the masses. And that's simply why the youth and many people are supporting this protest by the masses that SARS should be disbanded. So Lalong, as the chairman of Governors Forum, I don't expect anything differently from him than what he said. He has to speak favorable because he needs to court the love and friendship of the Inspector General of Police and the presidency and others in government. But sadly, as a representative, as an elected officer of the people, He's supposed to understand why his people are crying. The pains his people have been going through in the hands of SARS. SARS has caused more problems to people than the few solutions okay. they have brought. The general thing is that the Nigerian police is Nigerian police. But giving another unit a special name to do a special work shouldn't make them terror to citizens. They should be protecting okay. citizens, not terror to citizens. So, Lalong do not understand the pain citizens are talking okay, about. Okay, Reverend, I'll, I'll come back to you. keep voicing out so that people like Lalong and others who are in support of not disbandment of SARS should know yes. why uh, we I want think that's, SARS to that's be that's okay, Reverend, when we for your democracy, opening remark. I'll come freedom. back to you in a, in a while. But let me listen to Mr. Bola, but let me listen to your opening remark. What's your take about the Governor's uh, Forum from the North? Our politics is local. And there is nothing that best defines politics in, in any polity beyond the issue of security. Because without security, every other thing plays, you know, every, every other thing goes out of play. So, contextually, given the existential problems in the northern part of Nigeria today, the fact that as we speak, in the northeast of Nigeria, insurgency 
is the order of the day. In the north central of Nigeria, ethnic cleansing issues between the the others and and the natives. In the northwest of Nigeria, including the home state of the president, Banditri, as we speak now, there are people who are from Kasina State who have gone to rent houses in Niger Republic. They go and sleep in Niger Republic and they come to do business during the day in Kasina, in Nigeria. Hmm. Many villagers in some parts of Kasina have literally emigrated, emigrated out of Nigeria to live in Niger Republic, and some are in, and some are in Egypt, uh, are in, uh, in camps in Niger Republic. So I am not shocked that the northern governors have taken the position they've taken because any instrumentality of security now they have to pamper. They need to pamper. Look at the experience, look at the practical near fatal experience or experiences of the governor of Borno State in recent times. So my my friend, this is not about wanting to be polished, this is not about not wanting to join the forces, espousing a respect for human rights. It is just that they have Brazen existential problems okay. that they can't be bothered about the finance or and the niceties of uh, of respect for human rights that we are concerned with okay. in this part of in this part of the Mr. country. Mr. Bolaba, I will come back to you. Uh, uh, let me let, let's continue the conversation and look at some of the issues you've raised, uh, Reverend. Let's let's. Um, find a way to situate your initial position, and that has to do with these governors seem comfortable. And Mr. Balaba just, you know, gave us a strong allusion about a governor who was almost killed three times in the same north. And we're also talking about, you know, this issue that has to do with, uh, um, we've seen governors in the south, you know, throwing their support, probably... Do you think they are just being politically correct? Because we've seen governors supporting these protesters and letting them know that, just take it easy, we are in tune with what you're saying. Thank you very much. Is that uh, let me, me thank Mr. No, let me Bola take it from Reverend. I'll come back to you. Uh, but let's not forget that one of the key aspects of security is the peace and tranquility of citizens. If citizens are not at peace, even if you put police in every street of your country, there will still be insecurity. The fact about it is that SARS are not the ones that have stopped violence or are working to stop killings in northern Nigeria. From the northeast to northwest and north central, as you are saying, you will agree with me that the soldiers have been drafted into it. It's the military for the past 10 years if not more, have actually been directly in the forefront of the issue of terrorism in the Northeast, the issue of banditry of recent in the Northwest, and the issue of uh, farmer herders or whatever clashes that are going on in North Central. So SARS have actually gone beyond their boundary in dealing with Nigerians, not using the issue of insecurity. But I quite agree that governors of Northern states will try to play a nice guy. I did say that they have to make this uh, IG see them as people speaking favorably. They must not speak bad of whatever policy the police is doing. Even if that policy is against the people they are, so they are leading or they're supposed to protect. But generally in Nigeria, SARS have not treated Nigerians, right? The fact is that many people that SARS have claimed and called them criminals in Nigeria were law-abiding citizens, but because they could not go after the real criminals, they now tag those law-abiding citizens as criminals, and that is all. 
They treat people without respect. There's a provision in the law about even if someone is a, a suspected criminal, there is what to do. But SARS seems to feel they are the law themselves. They are even above the law. So it is what they say that makes you guilty. It is what they judge about you that condemns you. So what we are simply saying is, if northern governors will say they do not want the disbandment of SARS, are they really saying it because SARS have protected them? And I can say no, because SARS have not really protected them and stopped the violence. It is even the military that are doing it. But because SARS is one part of police force, they have to please the police to get more men. But what we are saying is that since they were elected by us to defend us, to protect us, we are telling them that SARS is not doing what is right. SARS is instead dehumanizing us. SARS is not treating us with respect. SARS is actually making lawful citizens the criminal to cover off something. Why have our insecurity not gone? Because many of those that they bring out and parade them as criminals were really not the criminals. They never even went after the criminals. They never even arrested the criminals. They just brand a lawful Nigerian that they feel looks simple. You know, that's why sometimes in this part of this country, people are forced to buy big cars. When you drive on many northern roads and you have a big car, even if you are a criminal, you see them worshiping you and say, oh, our old guy, your boys are on the street. Give us this, give us that. Is that what we are looking for? Okay. We are looking for people who will know a criminal and dictate a criminal and go after a criminal. So the protest against SARS should not be seen as a regional issue. It's a Nigerian problem because SARS is a product of the Nigerian police force. And I, and I know the Christian Association of Nigeria all over the country, we are in support of the scrubbing of SARS. Even the new name they are trying to, the new group they want to form, we shouldn't just be giving names to groups. The Nigerian police force itself is enough institution that should go and take care of Nigerian security. All we need is give these men the, the, of the Nigerian police force good training. They don't need okay. to be called SARS or anything. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Goloba, I, I'm a bit worried. I know you want to react to the last question I asked uh, Reverend, but let's also add this to your response. And that has to do with, we're yet to see young people, you know, hit the streets like we have in the South. And even when we have it in the federal capital, we saw the situation where some, I don't want to call them thugs, since the police said they are not thugs, that they are two rival protesters, I mean, protesting groups, clashing. So don't you think this protest has been, part of my language, ethnicized? What I have said, or what I'm saying is that truly the North is in support of this protest. A large number of people, especially the masses in the North, are in support of this protest. But probably the reason why you've not seen them largely on the street is because of the insecurity in northern Nigeria from northeast to northwest to north central, the banditry activities, the kidnapping and the toggery that has been introduced into all these evil activities. People are just scared not to come out and get shot by these kind of men since uh, they will not even have anybody to protect them. The fact about it is that these people have killed in the past and nothing happened. So now that we are even fighting against SARS for the bad treatment she's given on us, so they will just even help, or someone can just help these people to come out and shoot innocent people, and there is nothing. They will say, okay, you were rejecting SARS, now you've got killed. I think simply that's why people have not come out. But people are angry, people are tired of what SARS is doing. SARS must be civic. If we have moved into a democracy, our police force must also be civic in the way they handle anybody. Our police must not be treating citizens okay. as if they are not human beings. That's okay. not good for our country. That's not good for the democracy we yearn for. That's not good for even a civil rule. The fact is that why do we go to other countries and ask people to behave well? Well, in our country, we cannot behave well. Okay. So the northern masses are in support of SARS disbandment, but they are only being cautious because of the situation at the moment. Interesting. Okay, Mr. Golova, let me have your take on that. The question was originally for you, but we had a bit of network challenge. So what do you make out of these uh, low-key in terms of uh, protests hitting the street? As much as Reverend has given us his position, what's your own take? My take of the protest? Yes, that is not largely popular in the north, except for in Abuja. And you saw what happened a few days ago where the protesters were attacked by another, according to police, that it was two rival protesters uh, group that had a clash and not by thugs. We really have to be very careful some of these issues the way we discuss them. 
Uh, we really, really have to be very, very, very careful. I, I don't see issues that will matter to people in New York being of importance to people in Delaware or Iowa. The states are different. The, the economic dynamics are different. The sociocultural uh, situations are different. And to be honest with you, except anybody is beclouded by, by uh, tribalistic, uh, uh, tribalistic issues, you will know that as we speak, Northern Nigeria is in the crux of existential challenges. Look, most of the states in the north are just they are they are practically as affected security wise as most of the Sahelian countries. Look, in the course of my business, I was in a place called Basali in Casino State, in Casino State, about say, two and a half, three years ago. As I'm talking to you now, the, the institution I went to, to inspect in Basari is literally, literally closed down. Literally closed down because Basari is now practically an an enclave of bandits. And the state government literally had to beg the Nigerian, the federal government to send out soldiers to that, to that part, part of the country. So when we sit down in Lagos and we're analyzing that people are not protesting, you want me to shock you? Ironically, ironically, as a result of the momentum of this protest, he was, we, we now see visuals of a group of women in Katsina calling for the end of, of uh, President Buhari's government. Have you forgotten that as a result of the security situation in, in Katsina, less than three months ago, people took to the streets and we're tearing down, and we're tearing down the banners of Buhari in, 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 in in, uh, in uh, what's the name of the capital, Katina. So I am sitting there thinking we should not be comparing apples and oranges. Their problems are far different from ours. And, and ironically, we will be the one in the South who will, on the one hand, be demonstrating the need for an organic federalism because our they are returning our process. So I'm sitting here now. What point do we want to score? By saying that the northern governors are refusing to support the uh, you know, answer. Oh, that they, that they should join, join us to agitate for the end of SARS. And ultimately, they'll be obliterated from the first of the year. How many times, how many times as the government of Labour State been literally attacked that snail in the security system. Okay. We should, we should be very careful some of these issues where we approach them. They are different. Quite, quite, quite on point, uh, Mr. Bola, but thank you for that uh, position. I think your, your intervention is really, really apt and it's quite educative, but let me just quickly take Reverend for his last comment on this, then we might have to keep you for the second topic. Reverend, I know you're itching to react to the issue raised by Mr. Bolaba. Let's have your final comment on this. Yeah, I think uh, what Mr. Bolaba said is right, is correct, but not completely correct. When we had the issue of Black Lives Matter in the U.S., it went beyond the state that it happened because it's a kind of a systemic challenge that has been going on in the U.S. for a long time, and every part of U.S. really came up to show that enough is enough of killings of blacks. Mm. And the NSAS uh, issue in Nigeria 
it's actually a, a Nigerian problem. It's not just a Southern problem. But I did say earlier that the simple reason why many Northerners have not come out is simply because they've got their security challenges at the moment. Some of the difficulties we are facing with banditry and terrorism, so people are just scared of. And you did cite example that even in Abuja, some group of people came, but another group were, came out and they became like a rival protest group. Of recent, this is not the first or second protest in Abuja that some groups will be sponsored just to ridicule the other protesting group. But it has not changed anything because all of us as Nigerians are suffering in the hands of SARS. All of us in Nigerians are suffering because of bad governance. All of us in Nigeria are suffering because of insecurity. All of us in Nigeria are suffering because of all that is going on in our country, poor economy. So we must not begin to put sight of to issues that affect Nigerians. Let's look at issues of Nigeria. It is the Nigerian police force that established SARS. It is not the southern Niger Nigerian police force. Mm. It is the Nigerian police force. The Nigerian police have one inspector general of police. And so if there's a problem in Nigeria, it's a problem in Nigeria. Okay. If you think it is not in the north, Let's allow this time. You will see that tomorrow the north will begin to boil because of NSAS. And at that time, the south will say, but what we are doing, where were you? So let's balance the conversation here. There is a problem and we want it corrected. We want the police because police are our brothers, police are our friends, but we want them to work in accordance with Nigerian law, in accordance with the law and the act establishing them. But when they begin to terrorize citizens, when they begin to make citizens feel not comfortable, not safe anymore, blackmailing citizens and uh, taking them to cell just to make them look like criminals. Well, the real criminals are out there. They are not arresting them. I think all of us as Nigerians must come out to shout. The last thing I'm going to say is that don't forget, one of the key voices and the leading protesters about this is a northerner. That lady who came up, who actually moved. Yes, of course, it was a thinner thing, but she's a northerner. So this whole thing shouldn't be looked, seen from that angle. We want to correct the Nigerian SARS system. We want a system that will protect citizens. Citizens, okay. it is our tax that police have been paid. But sadly, police Reverend use Joseph. even our tax money to Reverend Joseph, let me, let me just right. quickly jump and in because of time and also to just put it on record. I, I'm sure the lady you're referring to is Haisha Yesufu. Interestingly, we, some of us also found out that good, we don't want to color this discussion. She's actually from a Dosti, just to put the record on track. She's not from the north, but definitely maybe a do north. But let's just say that she is from the south. But the message is clear. It is not about where you come from. We should feel the pain of others and we should rally together to say no to whatever is wrong. Thank you once again, uh, Reverend Joseph Hayab, who is the Khan uh, chairman of Cardinal State. I'm so sorry we can't continue this conversation. Our time is fast spent. We have to move to the second issue. No problem. Uh, Mr. Balaba, we will be back shortly. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, protest within the federal capital territory are banned. That is all for discussion in the next half. Please don't go anywhere.